transitioning to the, the pro level, that NFL draft day, what was, yeah. the, what, what was the feeling like going in the first round? Oh, man. Um, I was a little disappointed because I, I, I kind of felt like I, I was happy. But then again, I'm like, man, because I was in a position where I could have went higher, you yeah. know, to, you know, high up in the draft. You know, my name is in conversations. Or well, we may take you. We may take Erlach, or We may take da da da. da you know, like that. And um, so once I actually got drafted, it was just like a weight lifted off my shoulders. You know, then new pressure came. <laughs> so it was like all the old pressure gone, not new pressure. But um, yeah, it was definitely a uh, weight lifted off my shoulders. You know, to being able to be in, to be in a position to be able to do something that you've been wanting to do for a long time and to see it come true in that moment. It was just, you know, so um, surreal. And, you know, that was one of the biggest moments in my life and also my family's life. And, you know, um, it started on my journey where I'm on today. I'm in different places in life that I, that I would have never thought of if, if it wasn't for football. Definitely, man. Through that process, what was like the, the highlight of draft night for you? Uh, I guess the highlight was getting dressed. Really? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, getting dressed. You know, uh, I wore black and white, which, you know, I wanted to kind of keep it, you know, yeah. subtle. So, you know, I wore black and white. Just getting dressed and all the thoughts, you know, going through your head. You're just reminiscing about, you know, the middle school days. Or pop. <laughs> I didn't play Pop Warner, but playing in the neighborhood, um, you know, going to Tennessee and just the experience there, winning national championship, and it's just like all that came together for this one moment right here. You know, and and it just uh, it was just a uh, um, it just solidified all the hard work that you done. You know, that I had put in to be able to get rewarded for that. It was just crazy, man. And you know, then actually hearing your name. You know, um, being called, watching the TV, and like, boom, I was on the phone. Like, yeah, they go call. You know, they go, we go draft you, da da da. And next thing you know, my name came up. I'm like, wow. You know, it was just a, a real. It was a heartfelt moment. It was just like, man, you know, not like, not like I made it, but it was just yeah. like, you know, I'm, made, I'm I'm at a different level now. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like, I want I want to keep keep being at this level so that's why i said new pressure came you know so Mm -hmm. just to stay focused and continue to go on your journey as far as you can go yeah hey before the draft did you talk to the jets at all before they drafted? yeah yeah i went to i I flew up to new york thousands of times they kept bringing me before making me stay in the hotel room for two three days you know just whatever and um I kind of feeling that, you know, that they was really um, into me, you know, that I was their guy. So it was just, it was just, was I going to be around, you know, for that time, you know? And, um, you know, they did the trade where they traded parts, not parts, they traded Bill Belichick to get the pick, right? So that was crazy, right? It all all worked out. It all worked out. Yeah, you see him later on in your career, man. Yeah, 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 you're right. Right. So it was just, it was just that moment. Yeah, you know, they they talked to me a lot. You know, which is a lot of teams, especially as you get closer to the draft, you start flying out even more to these teams and they, more interviews and things like that. So yeah. So what was the top teams that talked to you the most frequent? The Jets was one, and who else? The Jet, the Jets, Pittsburgh. Um, um, Jets, Pittsburgh, Ravens. Um, who was um, well, Giants a little, Giants a little bit, but they they knew they was gonna trade their pick. Buffalo, they knew they they was gonna move down. So, yeah, um, went to Chicago, went to uh, where well, the Redskins went there a couple times. Yeah, so you would have been name- solid. you would have been solid with this, the Steelers, man. Then they uh-huh. Ravens, you would have been solid. Yeah, but they got they got um they took Plexico, they took Plexico. Yeah, hey, then the Ravens, then the Raven they took my teammate. They took Jamal Lewis. Yeah, so that's who. They, but you can't have so, a you can't, you can't have enough defensive linemen though. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So I mean, I ended up playing. It worked out. I ended up playing Ritz later on again. 
So, sure, he, so uh, he became here. So during that process with the Jets, they go going to New England, AFC East teams. Right. That right. rivalry right. right there, man. How was that during your your football journey in the NFL? Well, well, I, I mean, first of all, I want I want to thank the Jets for being able to play that that long and and I produced that long. So it came to a point to where I guess they was looking to go in a different direction. And um, I definitely didn't like that because I really wanted to finish out with the Jets. And, you know, I just felt like, um, you know, they wanted to get younger, you know. So um, I didn't like how they handled the process. You know, I kind of felt like they put me behind the eight ball in handling the process. But um, but going to New England, it, it was it was a pill to swallow. I made I made that choice, you know, but going there, uh, you know, once I got to the team, they really embraced me. Um, Belichick, you know, I kind of was familiar with, with his coaching style and how and how he is through um, Bill Parcell. Um, yeah, so I kind of understood, like, the progress that, you know, the challenging progress that he, he would – that he'll put you under. Um, so, I mean, it was definitely, man, the team, Brady, all of them was, was very respectful. You know, they treated me with welcome arms. You know, Brady's like one of the best teammates you could ever have. For sure. You know. What stands, first, first, what stands, first thing, <laughs> what stands out about Tom Brady among any other player to you? Well, you know, I went to school with Peyton. So, Peyton Manning was one, my quarterback at Tennessee. Um, for for a couple of years, and you know, just just to see how Peyton worked, and then when I got to the league, and I was able to play against Brady, and then also able to team up with him, just his work ethic, you know, just how the smartness, just how he go about his business, you know, how he take his body, and just how his personality just you know feeds through the locker room. You know, he he didn't have the big head. You would think somebody like that with the goat, you know, he'd be a little bit more arrogant. Nope. You know, he was he was just mellow, undertone, you know, laughing. You know, he knew when it's time to be serious. Like he was just an overall teammate and competitor. And I love playing against him too, because he brought the best out of you. You know, so you know, a lot of my games, my better games was against him, you know. So definitely. Yeah. So uh the differences between Rex Ryan and Bill Belichick for you. No, you act you are coached by both, so let's hear it, man. What's the difference? Uh, well, you know, Rex is very outgoing, right? And um, you know, he's very into himself. You know, he Rex, excuse my language, his shit started. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he is. You know, and um Belichick pretty much like, you know, he lured you to sleep, you know, with just his methodical approach and stick to the, the bottom line. Right, and then game day he beat you, you know. So he pretty much his approach is definitely different. They on two opposite ends, you know. But I think both of them still get the job done in they in a way. So I wish I wish Rex could have still been a head coach here and there, you know, get a get another opportunity because he is a good coach, you know. Um, sure. He make it fun. That was probably the most. The most fun I had playing was up on him. Like, I had a lot of fun playing up on him. But, you know, my best coach I ever had, though, in the pros was, I would say, Eric Mangini. Eric Mangini is um, my best coach that I had, you know. So, um, you know, and he comes from Belichick, too. So, That's him and Belichick are similar, right? So, they similar. They, like, identical. And then you have having Rex. You know, rest is very, you know, over the top. Definitely. So during your NFL journey, your best and favorite team bonding experience in the NFL for you? Hmm. Well, I guess it'd be the first, I guess it was every year it'd be the first road game. Like we'd go away, go to road game and um we'll have we'll have dinner, we'll have D line dinner. Right, so we get together, go to a restaurant, we eat, and then let the rookies pay the bill. So that's like the best. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I bet you eat extra much on that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, nah, I try. I try not to, you know, overdo it. Yeah. You know, like how they did me when I was a rookie. But you know, I learned from that. I was like, you know what? 
when it's my turn, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna eat sensible, but <laughs> they still got feel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, was there any more of that sort of stuff happening during the season on the rookies? Oh yeah, the rookies. The rookies have to take your pass in after practice, your helmets, all that, all year long. Right? <laughs> they got to they, they got to run out and get food for in the mornings on like Fridays. You know, on Friday practice, no, or Saturday for Saturday practice, they got to get donuts and sandwiches, and they got to have food for um, when we travel to get ready to get on the bus and stuff. They got to make sure food is there, so they take out all they go get the food and you know. Sure, that they don't have it, then it's kind of like you know they letting us down a little bit, you yeah. know. But so, you know, we had some good rookies that that really took pride in doing that, you know, because it was just part of the thing. Yeah. You know, our team wasn't real big on hazing, like we really didn't do that. You know, that's that's kind of the ways we kind of mess with the rookies, you know, like that. Then it got to the point I was like, well, you know, a lot of these rookies really don't have money like that to be spending on food. So then I came with that. I was like, look, man, we got to start giving them money. They can't keep paying for our food like that, you know? <laughs> so then on our team, we start basically paying for our own food, giving them the money and stuff like that. So uh, when, I, when I came in, I had to pay for the food. Yeah. Like, like the old heads. You know what <laughs> I mean? April came in, it was a bunch of old heads on the team, like um, Brian Cox, Mo Lewis. Yeah. Um, Gordon, like it was a bunch of old heads that been playing for like twelve well, plus years already. <laughs> so it us, you know, they try to spend all our money. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so uh during your football journey and through your NFL career, how did you sustain so many games and starts, man, and sustaining injuries? Oh man, just the grace of God, man. It's a blessing. You know, God, God, he, um, he blessed me with a great body, you know, a strong, durable body to be able to withstand, you know, all that pounding and being able to dish out the pounding too. So, I mean, just, just thanks to him, give credit to him and just working out, um, you know, pretty much working out, trying to stay strong, stay flexible. And that pretty much, you know, how I did it. I just took it one year at a time. You know, plus with me, I had to play so many different positions and different defenses. So every year it was like I was in another defense or I have another defensive coach or something. So I would always fluctuate. I'll be in, or the next year I'll be at 3 4, and, you know, just completely changing from position to position. And then towards the end of my career, I was, you know, I was playing, well, we played 3 4. I was inside a lot playing you know, nose tackle on third down. So I think all that helped my versatility as I got later in, into my career. So Definitely. I think that what that would help me stay in the lead longer. Yeah. Definitely. So uh you tallied up like seventy something stacks from that that defensive line role. So what move helped you tally up all those sacks and whatnot? Well I like. I wish I would have stayed in a four three. I, I would have over hundred. I would have had over hundred <laughs> if I was four three. But just being able to go from different positions and be productive in those different defenses is, you know, just pretty much just quickness, off the ball, strength, power. You know, I used a lot of power. I didn't have a lot of freedom like, like a lot of guys you see. You know, nowadays they just rush and be free rushing the passer. I didn't have a lot of freedom. I had to play the run a lot. You know. In three, four, you got a two gap. So it's like you got you gotta you play run first and you pass rush last. You know, so you gotta take care of all the game, then you go pass rush. So, you know, um, you know, just being able to bull rush, use my power and my quickness. That's pretty much how I was able to um totally up all that. Definitely, man. So uh, you were saying earlier in our interview about those different positions that you played in middle school, do you think that helped you as a pro? Uh, yeah, yeah, it helped me a lot, Definitely. it helped me a lot. Yeah, especially with my athleticism, then being able to go, go down and, and be able to stand up some games, I would play linebacker, you know, in some games, I you know, I have to play the whole, you know, inside, you know, I may play um, some defense, I may line up at Mike linebacker, like I played different spots a lot of people really don't know like I was I was I guess the utility 
you know, the utility, what they call it, utility knife. Yeah. So I was able to do Swiss Army knife. I was able to do <laughs> most sure, of that. Hey, yeah, so. your, your last season, Bill Belichick knows that awfully well. Like, so, yeah. yeah, I'm a Patriot fan, so I know all about you, buddy. And, uh, yeah. But Bill <laughs> Belichick, he knows everything about players and bringing the best out in players as well. So, yeah. I just, I wish, I, I just wish that um that last year man would have went a little because I was banged up a lot my last year. You know, I was coming off a of hip surgery and and um you know so I sign, end up signing getting into camp late. So That's you know I just had a lot of a lot of challenges and things that I was that I ain't never dealt with before. And then, you know Belichick he really had the patience with me. You know and um you know pretty much just took me on the wing. Just look man, just hey, just come for the ride. You know, <laughs> yeah, so, so it worked. So your last snap and after football, how have you applied those lessons and trials and tribulations to your personal life that you've learned from football after you retired? Man, when I retired, man, it just, just pretty much is with my family, just being home with my family, um, teaching them about dedication and hard work, you know, and just persevering through things. Um, when things get a little tough, you just – you know, you keep your chin up, you keep moving, you know, understanding that um, the sun coming out the next day, you know, no, no, um, no, um, no hard time will ever last, <laughs> you know, just like football, you lose a game, you go back to practice next week, you put it behind you, you, just keep moving, get ready for the next game. What advice would you give a younger player that's coming up through college on the journey to the NFL? What advice would you give them? Advice, you know, um, don't take it for granted. Treat every, treat every moment like it's your last. Like really, treat every moment like it's your last because it could, it it can be. Um, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Um, continue to to keep the drive and understand your process, and um, you know, just basically just go for it, man. 